Can you please give us an update on your most recent news release about what's going on in the rare earth or actually in the critical mineral list? Um, okay, so um, as of the 1st of August, um, China has effectively banned the exports of germanium and gallium um, to the West. This is some sort of revenge move against uh, the US and the West cracking down on the supply of key um, semiconductors or chips to the Chinese industrial empire. Um, a lot of this has to do with um, longer term strategic goals. In the short term, though, it's um, quite oriented towards the, um, the saber rattling that the Chinese have been indulging in towards Taiwan. Um, because, of course, Taiwan is um, the world's largest producer of semiconductors. So um, there are a number of factors going on here, but what we effectively have is some sort of um, revival of the Cold War uh, where um, battles are fought not on uh, battlefields, um, but in tit-for-tat measures, um, expulsions, uh, and in this case, the Chinese think that export bans are the um, most effective move that they can take to punish the West for restricting the flow of semiconductors to China. So would you mind giving us, giving us more of an update about what's coming out from the US government right now that's happening with, for instance, uh, the gallium and germanium, please? Well, the US government does not want to admit that the Chinese have got them in some sort of stranglehold at the moment. Um, the US felt that it could take uh, actions against semiconductor exports to China and uh, with impunity. And the Chinese have responded by restricting exports of some of the most critical inputs to the semiconductor industry because gallium arsenide, for instance, is a very important input into chip manufacturing. And so the Chinese are saying to the US and to the West, really, uh, you restrict the flow of chips to us, we'll restrict the flow of metals that go into the chips to you. So you won't have any chips to export. Now, one of the problems is that industry in the West, um, rather than governments, uh, industry uh, has, has not built up stocks of these critical metals. And this is a lesson that we need to look at across the whole critical metal space. Um, industries that use the critical metals are not filling warehouses with stocks for a rainy day. And a rainy day is frankly arrived because uh, they now have a situation where the Chinese have a signal, like a month ago, uh, that they were going to chop off the exports from the 1st of August, and they've done it. And most of these companies could not get in stocks within that time they have no fat. And so um, we're pretty much going to see a situation within weeks, if not months, that, or rather months, if not weeks, where uh, there are going to be shutdowns. Uh, there are going to be shortages because it's not a situation where you can come up with gallium and germanium out of nowhere in a difficult situation. The Chinese dominate like 98% of the um, gallium market. Uh, they have something like 66% of the uh, germanium production. Um, the rest um, largely coming from tech. Um, so Canada is the big player uh, for once in a critical metal. And um, that is a tech's byproduct production of germanium from its trail smelter in BC. Um, so tech are in a very strong position. Because tech, of course, are trying to fight off Glencore at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, germanium is not as um, uh, difficult a situation because that are, is uh, non-Chinese production of signs. Um, and uh, from what I hear, uh, groups like Trafigura, Trafigura have uh, a big uh, zinc refinery in um, Tennessee. They're looking now to uh, start um, byproduct production of germanium as well. A lot of these metals, um, not just these two, but others have been sent to tailings uh, by many large refineries and smelters um, because the price has been too low for too many decades. 
but now um, it's going to be uh, not only a strategic imperative to extract these metals from the waste flows of these refineries, but it's also going to be um, worthwhile from a price perspective. Um, it's early days uh, yet, of course, because it's only a few days since the ban came in, um, but I would expect that we're going to see the prices of these um, two metals uh, rise quite significantly, and that is going to change the dynamic uh, for the metals. So it's going to be more profitable for Western companies to actually produce them. And that creates an interesting new dilemma for the Chinese themselves because the Chinese um, have really rung an alarm bell. The West has heard the alarm bell and the West is responding by trying to up production. There's going to be a lag and it's going to take months. But at some point, the West will become self-sufficient in gallium and germanium. And at that point, the Chinese have no strategic hold over the West. And so if in a situation uh, that a, a shooting war begins with Taiwan, the Chinese are not going to have as much leverage over the West as they would have if they hadn't have taken this measure. Does that make sense? It does. And for everybody out there to access your most recent report called uh, Let the Cold War Rebegin, go to your website, uh, go to the following website and or reach out to uh, Christopher Ecclestone from Helgarten Company. Thank you so much for joining us today. We Thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much.